By the way, this cup does not contain any alcohol. It's pure water, it's pure H2O coming out of this cup or out of this mug. Welcome back to another video and today we're gonna try something a little bit different because I've noticed that recently I found it really, really hard to make any YouTube videos or to make anything creative or I think I've hit a creative block of some sort and I've been thinking about why is it a case that I've been hitting this block and after thinking about it for a little bit I think there might be a little bit of a disconnect between what I'm trying to do versus what I'm actually doing now and so here's sort of like the thought process behind uh, why is it a case that I've been trying out different formats of presenting my ideas or trying out different things recently because it's been a it's been a crazy couple of months and in fact in in about, in about a few weeks, I'm actually heading over to Paris. I'm taking a flight to Paris and I'm gonna spend two weeks in Paris before I start grad school. So it's been a bit of a crazy time. I'm just trying to orientate myself in this sea of chaos. But nevertheless, here is somewhat of a little conclusion that I've derived from this little sea of chaos. So here it is. A bit of a general observation here. I want you to pay attention to this video right now. I'm speaking in front of a camera, in front of a professional video light against this sort of like pristine looking background. And what this basically does is that it establishes a kind of, kind of field of authority. So when you're listening to this video, it's like, I know what I'm talking about. It's like, you know, I'm like the authority on a certain subject. I'm the authority on literature or philosophy or how to read. This illusion of authority. And yes, I'm calling this an illusion of authority because in reality, I'm a 22 year old who's about to head into grad school, who's about to learn everything that I've yet to learn. And I'm very excited to learn all these things. I'm very excited to bring out more content on how to read better, how to think critically, or how to use literature and philosophy to transform your life practically. But you know, there's like, there's so much stuff out there that I don't know yet. There's so much stuff out there that I've yet to explore. And there's just so many insights that I've yet to, that I've yet to discover. And it's sort of like a, it's sort of like a conflicting feeling. It's sort of like cognitive dissonance for me to have YouTube as a medium for me to s express my ideas. And at the same time, have this thought at the back of my mind that's always like, you're not exactly ready to talk about this here. You're not exactly well read in this area yet. So who the hell are you to get on the camera and to talk about these things? That was the source of my creative block recently. And I feel like it's necessary for us to be kind of like honest about this kind of stuff. And I feel like it's necessary for me to be honest about this kind of stuff and to sort of orientate my content in the future or put my content back on the right track. And especially nowadays, young people don't even have that space to think about or to critically assess information because we are all in a sense, forced into perspectives. We're forced into taking a certain viewpoint on reality. Um, we're forced, almost like a, like a value judgment that we're all taking. We're forced into certain perspectives because we're, we're expected to take a very firm position on something right off the bat without really realizing that what needs to be cultivated is this process of discovery, this process of maybe not knowing what's going on in the world. Maybe everything you read on a blog, maybe everything you read on the news, maybe everything you read from a certain substacks that you subscribe to, maybe that's, that's not like the solid perspective that you should take to look at the world. And media right now is going through this proliferation of different perspectives. It's like we're, we're, we're thrown into this mix. Young people are thrown into this uncharted territory of how do we figure out how to live in this messy environment where everyone seems to know, well, everyone's got this air of authority going on. If you're on social media and when you're producing content, everyone has a, had this aura around them. And basically it's like, yeah, follow my course to, um, get fit or follow my precisely my instructions to get to to get to where you want in life and that puts young people like me and you in a very tricky position because well if you are in an environment where everyone seems to know what they're talking about what about you what about developing your own perspective on life what about sort of like thinking things through for yourself what about really penetrating into the source of the problem instead of just dancing around borrowing people's ideas or instead of just following the latest trend in philosophy or instead of just following the latest thing that's on your on your for you page. So I guess the cognitive dissonance is catching up to me and I've been really thinking about, you know, what kind of content do I want to produce in the future and what kind of impact do I want to have on people or what kind of impact do I want to have on my viewers? So all these things were coursing through my brain. And at the end of the day, I sort of reached a conclusion that I have to turn this YouTube channel not into like a pedagogical sort of, I know what I'm talking about, here's me teaching you something, but into more of a conversational sort of um, 
they call it dialogical, or instead of presenting information to you guys to tell you guys what to do, uh, I really want to make this entire thing into an, an exchange or into sort of like a dialogue because, well, I think that's what's lacking. Because young people, they, they're not really exposed to examples in the media of kind of like a dialogue that's going on. And the best thing that you're going to get is from a university class. Yet most people don't exactly have access to philosophy classes or English literature classes. And, and this is one aspect of the education system that I really have a bone to pick is this, you know, uh, you're trying to section off a group of people to have an artificial exchange in the setting of the university. Instead of an open exchange where you could think about different things and converse in a very down-to-earth manner, and instead of claiming some sort of authority on these platforms and you know generate some revenue off of this sense of authority that you have, why don't we focus on developing a healthy discourse around critical thinking, healthy discourse around, hey, actually, you as a young person, you can think this stuff through for yourself. If you have the right encouragements and the right group of people, Maybe you can be the conversation starter. And I think my videos right here is just gonna serve as that little spark for you to have something to talk about, for you to have something to discuss with your friends. Nevertheless, that's the opening rant about where I'm at with this channel and about some sort of the, the, the future work that I wanna put out on this channel. From now on, after a few weeks of thinking about this, I feel like I really wanna produce content that's kind of like a thought diary of some sorts. Instead of framing my arguments and my ideas, in a polished format. These future thought diaries, they're gonna be all over the place. I could be reading different things. I'm gonna share certain excerpts from the books that I've read or share certain life experiences, tell different stories about what's been happening recently in my life and to sort of facilitate a healthy conversation around thinking things through for yourself instead of relying on these um, media personalities to tell us what to do. And I really feel like this is the future future of my work and it really liberates me to, to sort of document my journey as I go because I don't know everything. I'm still trying to read through all the things that I'm trying to read through. I'm still trying to experience life. I'm still trying to, you know, figure out how this life stuff works. It's all very difficult, very confusing, but let's be confused together. Which brings us to what I want to talk about today, which is um, this thinker by the name of Michel de Montaigne. And if you're familiar with um, philosophy, if you're familiar with uh, the sort of the Renaissance humanist movement. Uh, he was one of the central figures um, throughout the entire humanist movement. A brief biography on this guy. He was born in 1533. So in the 16th century, when the whole like humanism movement was kicking off and you have certain scholars like Erasmus. So they were all around the same period. And he was born to a father who was a little looney tune because this father decided to raise young Montaigne on Latin. And the story went, Montaigne, when he was a little younger, he had a German tutor who spoke no French. And basically, this tutor had to communicate with Montaigne with Latin exclusively. So this guy grew up speaking Latin, essentially. And in this entire humanist discourse, uh, it is very much admired to speak Latin natively. And the scholarly culture around the humanism movement was centered around the old works of Cicero, the old Roman literature of Seneca, and then certain treatises and plays by Terence. So Latin as a language in this culture of learning was very much revered. And the words of Cicero, certain scholars even revered Cicero like a god. So the culture at the time was that you need to read the Roman classics in order to be considered as someone who's learned, as someone who's, um, who's got anything worthy to say. But even though Michel de Montaigne sort of grew up in this entire elitist <laughs> learning culture, he was very much familiar with the classics. He was very much sort of like immersed in this discourse of you have to read Cicero, you have to read all these great thinkers in the past. When he actually sat down later in his life to write um, these essays, les essais, he actually didn't use Latin to write these treatises or these little short essays. Instead, he preferred to use French because French for him was a fleeing language. It's a language that could be here today and disappear the next day. And he wanted this book to be a moment to moment documentation of his thinking process, moment to moment documentation of some of the things that he's been thinking about and some of the things that he's been going through. And the result is a beautiful, beautiful little collection of essays that are very much down to earth and that are very much readable to everyone. And he wrote these essays coming from a place of like, hey, I'm just a guy who has read a lot and I'm here trying to write these essays and here's me trying to figure out life. 
despite the fact that I might not know everything, but here is my subjective perspective on this problem, and here's my thinking process. And of course, in retrospect, academics like to project an air of authority on this text, but when he wrote it, he didn't really think that he was going to become some uh, scholarly authority on death, or on educating children, or on reading well. All he wanted, in a sense, was a personal journal to document his entire intellectual journey. And that's something particularly admirable uh, in an age, especially right now, when everyone's trying to claim the final word on a debate. Everyone's trying to have the final say uh, on a certain subject. So at the end of this video, I would really recommend you to read some of some of his short essays. Some of these entries are very short. Uh, sometimes they ramble on for pages, but sometimes they're very short and pithy. And to start to wonder, why is it a case that we feel this need to always appear as an authority on something in this day and age? Why is the final aim of education to know a bunch of things? Why is the chief aim of education to find answers or to have a certain answer that no one could touch? Are we merely training ourselves into answer finding machines or are we actually cultivating a spirit of discovery or are we actually cultivating this courage to document our process instead of finding an finding a artificial ground for us to have the final say on. And of course, in the spirit of Montaigne, um, from now on, I really want to use this, these videos to document my, my journey instead of laying out things clearly and instead of framing my videos as these sort of things that you must do to read better or to understand philosophy better. Why don't I just um, document every step of the way honestly? Why don't I allow myself to descend into rambles when I'm trying to figure out a certain thing? And why don't I allow you guys to show me your perspectives or show me your end of the argument or show me your way of looking at the world? And of course, that's going to make it easier for me to make these videos and it's going to make it very interesting because um, the next year of my life is going to be kind of chaotic because I'm, I'm heading into an honors year for my literature degree and I'm going to write up this thesis. And as I'm writing the thesis, uh, I'd love to have this platform as a place where I can bounce ideas around without necessarily having the final say. And I really want my work to be a representation of uh, thinking happening uh, in real time instead of me. Uh, conjuring up a conclusion where I have to sort of like change or debunk this conclusion a few years down the road. Nevertheless, thank you for putting up with my rambling tonight, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, and goodbye.